What's the difference between a puppet and a dummy? Puppets are shadows on the wall, stars on Broadway, and even helps us learn to count. But what about Bubba J? Is he a dummy? This is All Request History. If you've ever been curious about the history of, well, anything, you're in the right place. Subscribe here, put your request in the comments, and you could be the next All Request History. Thanks this time to Fried Frog Legs Animation for requesting the history of puppetry. Puppets originated centuries ago, and some have been found in Egyptian tombs dating back 2,000 years. They likely started with hand gestures to create shadow puppets, then later stick figures. They were used for entertainment and education. From ancient culture to modern police officers who work with children, the world is a better place because of these little friends. Puppetry came from several cultures. Egyptians created the colorful Aragus puppet. The Greeks made religious characters called Skothheim, or processional puppets. China developed shadow puppets. In Italy, marionette theaters were very popular. In fact, Punch and Judy, a controversial story still talked about today, started in Italy in the 16th century. Indonesia and Japan developed unique puppetry traditions, like Wayan Kulit using lights and shadows and Bunraku theater performances. Puppetry at its core is based on four basic types. First, shadow puppets. The puppeteer is hidden from audience view and backlit subjects cast a shadow on a wall, screen, or even a curtain to tell their story. Next, a marionette is a puppet controlled by strings from the puppeteer above. Third is a live puppet or a body puppet. If you've seen any of these images of the Broadway show or maybe even seen the show The Lion King, you know exactly what that looks like. And lastly, the arm puppets. Probably the most famous type of puppet in the world because the most famous puppeteer's arm was used to introduce us to the most famous puppet in the world. Yep, Jim Henson brought us Elmo. And oh yeah, Kermit and Gobo and Ernie, Bert, Sprocket, Animal, Wembley and Miss Piggy, heck, all the Muppets on his award-winning Sesame Street TV show. Award-winning, yeah, over 200 daytime Emmys. Speaking of television, as entertainment moved to this medium, puppetry was an obvious choice to entertain and educate, just like it did thousands of years ago, and brought us several stars. Starting as a radio artist, Bob Smith voiced a character we all know as Howdy Doody. In 1947, they transitioned to TV and lived in the Wild West town of Dutyville. NBC ran 130 episodes, and the show brought us, of course, Buffalo Bob, Howdy Doody, Clarabelle, Princess Summerfall, Winter Spring, J. Cornelius Cobb, the mayor of Dutyville, Phineas T. Bluster, Flubadub, Dilly Dally, and even Mambo the Elephant. NBC also produced 700 episodes of Kukla, Fran, and Ollie from 1948 to 1957. The backbone of the show was the incredibly talented puppeteer Bert Hillstrom. His unscripted characterizations of Kukla, a doll on his right hand, and Ollie, the dragon on his left, were spot on and he never broke character and certainly kept host Fran Allison on her toes. No script, really. CBS debuted The Ed Sullivan Show in 1962 and introduced us to one of the most famous puppets in the world, a little mouse named Topo Gijo. He was the brainchild of puppeteer Maria Perego and voiced by Giuseppe Mazzullo. You may remember Topo's popular catchphrase all throughout the 60s. Not only did Topo say this phrase on every appearance, but it was also the last words uttered on the show's finale in 1971. Eddie, kiss me goodnight. The popular Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood ran on PBS from 1968 to 2001. Host Fred Rogers got his start in show business as a puppeteer. His endearing demeanor worked perfect for his alter ego characters of Daniel Tiger, Henrietta Pussycat, Lady Elaine Fairchild, and of course, King Friday the 13th. And yes, he voiced and played all of them. Fun fact, the talented Fred Rogers, he also did all the music for that show. In New York City in 1933, Sherry Lewis was born. 
This young ventriloquist got her break in TV on an American Idol-style show in the 50s called Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. Her hand puppet character was so good that it landed her her own PBS TV show, Lamb Chops Play Along, in 1992. That show, of course, brought us Lamb Chop, but also Wingding, Charlie Horse, and Hush Puppy, but also brought Sherry six Emmy Awards. The world lost Sherry to cancer at the young age of 64, but Sherry's daughter, Mallory, still does children's shows featuring Lamb Chop and has the original sock puppet in safekeeping in her Malibu, California home. In 1980, Hollywood producer George Lucas asked Jim Henson to create a new character he was working on for his latest Star Wars film. Jim said he was too busy, but he asked Grover to do it. Well, by Grover, I mean the genius behind Grover, Frank Oz. Frank has done everything from the Energizer Bunny to the Muppet movies. In 1980, there was no CGI or AI, so Lucas was going to use a monkey. Thankfully, he asked Frank Oz for his help and gave him full creative control, and now we have Yoda, one of Hollywood's most memorable characters. Yeah, he's a puppet. Getting back to Jim Henson for a minute, he died in 1990 at a very young age of only 53, but left the world with so many memorable characters from Sesame Street, Muppet movies, Fraggle Rock, and so much more. His legacy lives on as PBS still provides his educational television to more than 150 million viewers in 150 countries in more than 70 languages. The Jim Henson Foundation is run by his daughter Cheryl, and it's the only grant-making institution to promote puppetry in the United States, so the magic of storytelling through puppetry can live on for generations just like Kermit and Miss Piggy taught us. Now, if you feel like there's some people missing here, let's clarify for a minute. There's a difference between puppetry and ventriloquists. Puppeteers are hidden and ventriloquists are present and play themselves and their dummy. They're popular and famous too, so here's some honorable mentions to ventriloquist dummies. Edgar Bergen was a radio star, ventriloquist, and comedian from Chicago. He got his start in radio in vaudeville, but became popular on TV with his dummy, Charlie McCarthy. In fact, if you saw Edgar without Charlie, you may not even recognize him. However, if you look carefully into his daughter Candace Bergen's eyes, you'll see the resemblance of Edgar, not Charlie. Superstar Jeff Dunham created his own dummies and played banquet halls and birthday parties until he landed a TV commercial. Then from comedy club appearances to sold out stadium TV specials, he's never looked back. The youngest contestant to ever win America's Got Talent just happened to be ventriloquist Darcy Lynn. She won season 12 in 2017, and Darcy now tours, does guest appearances on TV, and has millions of followers on her social media channels. So now that you know the difference between a puppet and a dummy, be sure to follow your favorite, or even better, how about make your own? All you need maybe is an old sock, or a floodlight, your fingers, and a good story. Well, thanks for checking in. Are you curious? Subscribe here, leave your request in the comments, and you could be the next All Request History.